couple months ago we brought you a full episode of Test Drive Spotlight on the new 2019 Ram 1500 Limited. That represented the top end trim for this new generation of Ram truck. And a lot of you had some sticker shock when you saw the MSRP of that vehicle. Well I got bad news for you, it's almost as bad with this one. Our snapshot is on this 2019 Ram 1500 Rebel. Now the MSRP for this is about $13,000 less than the Limited that we featured, but it still comes in at $71,910. Now I should remind people, we usually have to say it in the comments, but just because we're reporting the MSRP for this truck doesn't mean you're going to walk into the dealership and pay $71,000 for this truck. There's almost always incentives here in North America for these vehicles, so we only report that because it's the benchmark when we talk about pricing. Now we are going to be showing you absolutely everything about this truck, we already did that with the Limited, so you can click the link in the top right corner of your screen to watch that episode. Rather we're going to be going over some of the changes and differences that come with this more or less mid-model Ram Rebel. Now here's how I see the Ram Rebel in Ram Trucks fleet. Essentially this is the light duty version of the Ram 2500 Power Wagon. That's actually a truck I was hoping to be able to feature and I emailed our press guy out here in Montreal, asked him if we had a 2018 Power Wagon on the fleet. They had it last year, I missed it, or the year before really, but they offered me this. So this is essentially what you would get in the light duty segment, it's called the Rebel, but think of it as like a baby Power Wagon. The 2020 Ram 2500 Power Wagon eh, more or less has been announced. We should be seeing it in a couple months and that will be a truck I'm pretty excited to be able to get and we'll be having it here. But I really do think that this is the smaller version of it. This is for people who don't need the huge 6.4 liter Hemi engine. They want something a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit more fuel efficient. The only engine on this is the 5.7 liter Hemi. Produces 395 horsepower, 410 pound feet of torque. Comes with the same eight speed torque flight transmission that you can get on any of the other Ram models. So that's it, you can't get anything else. It has cylinder deactivation and that's it. No e-torque option for the Ram Rebel. Now this truck is also equipped with the same active level four corner suspension we saw on the Ram 1500 Limited. This only has an off-road one mode though. With the other truck you could go into entry exit, aerodynamic mode, normal, off-road one and then off-road two. There is no second mode here and I don't know if it's because this isn't really designed to be going off-road but I kind of figured that that's what the Rebel trim was for. So it's just interesting to note that you can't do that. Also on the inside we'll talk about it hopefully on our road test. You do have all-wheel drive but not the all-wheel drive automatic mode that we found on the Limited either because this has an electronic rear locking differential, whereas the one that we had optioned on the Ram 1500 Limited was a limited slip differential. Aside from that though, the front end looks a little different. You've got this bumpers kind of match in with the grill here, and then you have a two-tone look throughout with this red paint. They call it flame red at Fiat Chrysler. I think it looks really good. With this truck in this color, you only have one option on the inside. It is a mix of red and black, and I think it looks pretty cool. But I do like the two-tone. It gives it a very unique look. You do have these vents up in the top here. At least the ones on the front do have access into the hood, whether they're really functional or not. And then you go a little bit further back, and these bad boys on the top of the power dome are fake. But we kind of see that in this segment anyway. A lot of manufacturers are putting little fake details, so what can you do? But the front end looks pretty good, similar to the Ram 1500 Limited. You've got LED headlights, LED fog lights, front and rear parking sensors, tow hooks on the bottom of the truck, and that's about it. Power folding mirrors on the side. You also have keyless entry to the front doors and the tailgate at the back works the same sort of way that the one did on the Limited. There is no button on the fob though, so you do have to go up to it manually and open it up. The only thing not optioned on this truck are side steps. Bit of a pain if you're somebody like my daughter who's five. She cannot get into this truck on her own. You can get two different options for side steps, but they aren't automatic deploying ones like we saw on the Limited. But that's about it for the outside now. We're going to jump in and then we're going to hope for some snow later on to do a winter road test with the 2019 Ram Rebel. The interior of the Ram Rebel here is essentially what we saw on the Limited. There's no surprise there. You do have leather type stitching throughout the dashboard here. 
If it is leather, it might be leatherette, but it looks nice. It's got two different colors, white stitching and red stitching. I think it's kind of cool. And you've got a lot of red accents throughout the truck. So you have this red accenting that runs around the HVAC controls and screen through the center console around the steering wheel. You have a Rebel themed gauge cluster in the center. It's got the same computer information, but it just has a light up Rebel sign. And then you've got Rebel on a number of other places throughout the truck, just in case you ever forget which trim you're driving. The center console storage area is essentially the exact same. The only difference is there's no cover, wood cover to be able to cover up your cup holders or change area. It's all open, but you have all the same storage that we saw, all the same USB ports. Everything's there. CD player as well. I know a lot of people ask about that. LED interior lighting comes with the panoramic sunroof up top. So you really do get a lot of the technology oriented things that we had with the other model, but not quite as much. Obviously there's a $14,000 price difference. So it has to be made up somewhere. Part of that is there is no 12 inch Uconnect screen here. It's just their regular 8.4 inch, but it works perfectly fine in this truck. You have navigation, Sirius XM, as well as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You have your dual zone automatic climate control just below that, heated front seats, heated steering wheel. You lose that on ventilation, but we really don't need that here in the middle of winter. As I mentioned, there is no automatic four wheel drive mode. You have two wheel drive, four wheel drive high and four wheel drive low, plus that rear differential axle lock and a hill descent system. You have trailer brake assist through an electronic system. And aside from that, everything else is basically the exact same that we saw before. I do like the interior of this truck, especially not having the fully loaded version. I still really do like it. I do see some of the Rebels on the road, especially the old generation. So people do like this trim. And I really think it's a good mix between, you know, being able to be used as a work truck, but still having a lot of the bells and whistles that you want. Now, as I mentioned, we're hoping for some snow. I'm recording this the first day that we have the truck, so I can't predict whether or not we're going to have any. But fingers crossed that we can do some actual winter testing with this, with these beefy set of winter tires we have on this truck. Now, when we had the Ram 1500 Limited before, it was on all season tires. It was still November, so there really wasn't a requirement by law to have all the vehicles switched over to winter tires. We did have some snow, and I did talk about its performance, even with all wheel drive on all season tires in the snow, more on that video. But because it is snowing a little bit here, I mean, I can't control the weather, but we have to obviously film these vehicles. I can talk a little bit more about what these beefy tires can do. They're full winter tires in this kind of weather. I know it's not, again, the end all be all when it comes to winter testing, but I will try to give you a good idea of how this truck performs. And I can tell you right away, in pretty much similar conditions that we had with the Limited, the winter tires perform exceptionally well. Now I mentioned before that the all wheel drive system here, at least the control of it is slightly different. There is no automatic four wheel drive mode. So you do have to manually put it into four wheel drive. And we have had snow for the past 24 hours. So I have kept it in the all wheel drive high mode. So I'm gonna be using a little bit more fuel than I would normally be. But when you have it in two wheel drive mode, you can definitely feel the back end kicks out. And even on this snow, you know, I can give it not wide open throttle, obviously, but I can certainly pick speed up without really losing too much. Traction control light came on, but certainly wasn't any issue when it came to the actual performance of the vehicle. So I was in line where I was supposed to be going, all wheel drive was perfectly engaged and it really worked well. So I do like that. You do have the axle lock at the back, which, you know, if it enthuses it's out there who want to put the car into two wheel drive mode and put that on, then you can have a little bit of fun in an open parking lot. But for the most part though, this truck performs significantly better with winter tires. That's why we recommend always getting winter tires if you live in a climate that gets snow like this, it just works better. And I think this will probably be the closest we have to be able to have two essentially similar vehicles that have one winter tires and one with all seasons. And I can tell you right now, go back and look at the 1500 Limited and you'll see that I wasn't thrilled with the winter performance given the tire setup. So this makes a big difference. And that's the thing about this truck, man. It's not so much like the Winter Warrior, as we called the Subaru Forester. This doesn't just battle the winter. This absolutely decimates it. If you want to obliterate the snow, this is the vehicle to do it. We haven't driven a truck so far with winter tires on it, so this is a very fun experience for us. You know, it's such a heavy vehicle. You have those thick winter tires. Again, if you were looking at the beginning of the video, we have the actual description of them and the size and everything. So if you are looking to get tires for this type of truck, you can see what we're using right now. But man, they work really well. <laughs> you just obliterate the snow. 
And every time I take this out in the weather like this, you know, even though it's not very heavy, I'm just thinking how fun it would be to have a plow on the front of this. Just be able to control the plow, do some plowing as I'm going along, do some good service for people who have some plowed in driveways or just even the roads here. I'd love to do it. But the point is though that this car does a great job in the weather more so than I experienced before. You know, I wasn't really a huge fan of it, as I said. I wasn't really expecting to have too much snow this week, so it is fun to be able to test it out. And again, you know, the level of snow on the road is not that high, as you can see from the front camera. This really is sort of a mix between a regular, sort of every trim kind of truck and somebody who wants to do maybe a little bit of off-roading or does like the sportier appearance of it because if you get the sport trim you're going to have painted bumpers with the same paint color as your truck i have to say i like it i like the two-tone look again reminds me of the 2500 power wagon so i do like that but for the most part though i think people are going to be looking at this if they want something slightly different but still have a lot of the tech that you want and it's one of the things that i've really come to realize when it comes to chrysler they do allow you to get essentially any trim you want and get as many of the features as possible you could get the 12 inch you connect four screen on this we don't have it on here and i kind of like it i get to experience what the non 12 inch screen looks like the 8.4 and it works just as well i have controls physical buttons for things like my heated steering wheel and heated seats so that's certainly a plus so i'm happy to be able to have all this stuff but the great thing is you can still go up and option it as high as you want now we're on some unpaved roads here i actually did some driving through this area when we had the uh, 2019 ford f-150 looking at the front camera i was able to go that way and go on to some off-road stuff i was hoping to be able to do that here we don't really have that kind of stuff here in our area i've been thinking about it the last couple of days to try to think is there somewhere that i can go to truly test this truck's off-road capabilities but there's nowhere to do it and now i'm at a dead end and there was nowhere for me to go so i feel kind of silly i mean i guess i could go I could continue along i suppose I mean, if i get stuck it's going to be a very disappointing phone call to somebody but i did go through here this is mostly just dirt and sand well it does the job i mean if this truck got stuck in this kind of thing i would be very concerned but you can see here no, it does a good job of it. Actually, the suspension is one of the reasons why I really like the Ram 1500 because of that, that four-corner active suspension feels a lot more like an SUV than a pickup truck. And look at that. We just carved our own way <laughs> through some construction. So that was certainly a little bit of fun. Not quite the off-roading I was hoping for. If you live here in Quebec, if you're kind of out in our area in the Monte Regis, and you have a huge piece of land that's just flat, there's nothing on it, no dips, no bends, nothing. You got a big flat piece of land and you'd be willing to let us drive our vehicles over, please let me know because I would certainly like to be able to do that. But as of right now, that will be the amount of off-roading off that we'll be doing with this truck. I mean, if you really are interested in this for winter, if you're using this 365 days out of the year, then you're gonna wanna know how it performs. And I gotta say, even being a little stupid with it, oh man, the traction's just fantastic. So that four-wheel drive system really works. And again, you can control it, whether you want it in high or low or two-wheel drive only mode. You go up a couple trims, you'll be able to get that automatic mode. But I know I'm gonna be spending more gas, but it gets the job done. It gives me the confidence and security that you'd want in the winter. And I know if for whatever reason, we get 25 feet of snow tomorrow, that this truck will literally plow through it so I can pick up my daughter from school. Sure, the MSRP is astronomical at $71,000 Canadian, but it really does get the job done. Now, I know it still has vinyl seats with what Ram calls tire mesh inserts and vinyl door cards, so it's not the fully loaded, luxury-oriented trim that we saw with the Limited, but I really do like this, and it really is hard for me to decide which trim I would take. I mean, I don't have $71,000 or even $83,000 to be spending on a vehicle, but despite everything, I actually think I would take the Ram Rebel over the Limited, just because it gets the job done and looks pretty good doing it. The steel black painted front bumpers and two-tone paint gives this truck a very unique look, but also something that I really could see myself driving. Now, it might not be the trim for everybody, but that's the great thing about the 2019 Ram. There's just so much to choose from and so many different options that like any pickup truck, you really do have the ability to customize it exactly to your specifications.